When theologians dismiss the experience of God, there are many theologians out there, and in particular denominations, we don't have to give certain names, but they discredit the experience of God simply because there have been false prophets and false preachers that have claimed that something was the experience of God, but was not actually of God. And in order to have this discernment as to what is the experiential standpoint of God and what is manifested in deception and is of unclean spirits, uh, we need Holy Ghost wisdom for that. And we receive the Holy Spirit when we believe Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and we repent of our sins. The Father sends the Holy Spirit to live in us. Christ has saved us by his blood and now we can walk in the newness of life as we are born again. But the reality is, is that many theologians are so bogged down in the word of God that they don't know the God of the word. And that's a quote by Leonard Ravenhill. And it's so true because many people just continue to dive in this word, dissect. I need to know all the different um, doctrines and so forth. And it's good. We need to study and understand doctrine and, and what it is we believe. But that is not the end-all, be-all, and even that can become an idol above God because it is knowledge, and knowledge puffs up, and the more that you know, the less likely you're to be humble. But the true humble and contrite spirit God will not despise, and when we are humble enough, we are able to understand that God's word is true. It is the truth, but it is not the full emblem of God. The, it is truly of God, but the fullness of God is so vast that uh, not everything could fit in this book. We even know from the end of some of the Gospels, I believe it was John that said what, what Jesus Christ said, not even all the books of the world could fit in what he said. So God's word is truly true. It is fully true in the standpoint that the whole word from Genesis to Revelation is true. But it is not the full truth as in understanding the fullness of God because God is so vast. And so there is a part of the faith that comes through silence and solitude and an unhurried life, an unhurried uh, mind, uh, an un, uh, a rested state by which we are able to hear God's voice. There is a place where we can experience God. But many people don't experience God because they're so bogged down and always learning and growing in knowledge that they never spend time with God. We're always so apt to want to dive in and do anything but simply sit still and in the presence of God. And that's why many theologians, they rule off the experiential standpoint of God because they have never had that to begin with. Maybe they've had doses here and there. But many times they just rule it off because they're so busy on the doctrines and so forth that they never have learned the art of simply being with God. And this doesn't need to be some sort of weird manifestation or new age being one with the universe. That's just completely unbiblical. But simply taking time to be still, to close your eyes, maybe after you read some scriptures, something stood out, you just close your eyes and you just think upon that scripture and you allow the Holy Spirit who is in you to speak, to maybe bring to light some things that you need to be convicted of but you haven't heard of because you've been suppressing the voice of the Holy Spirit because you've been so busy and bogged down with life that you've never taken time to simply sit silent in his presence and hear his voice because we know that the word is what creates. The word can be heard, but God's voice, his original language, is silence. There was no need for uh, the Trinity to talk to himself before the creation of the universe and the world and the heavens. It was just him. And silently, he knew all things. Silently, he knew what one person was thinking within the Trinity. And silently, they spent time in the wonderful manifestation of God's love because God is self-sufficient. He is self-existent. He doesn't get anything from external sources. He is that which is. And so silence is his original language. And so we need to not allow the improper views of the experience of God and what we've seen probably from other YouTube videos of certain churches claiming that they've had an experience with God. Um, we need to not allow that falsity and those liars and deceivers 
to distance us from the true reality that we can experience God. Faith is not a feeling, it's an endurance in the truth. And we don't need an experience uh, of God to walk in the way of truth and to get to know Him. I mean, we'll have that immediate conversion that we can look back. But again, it's not always a feeling. Faith is not always a feeling. It's not always this big experience. But we need to understand that we can experience God on a deeper level and a more intimate level, but we have to be willing to spend more time with Him. Because if we think we can build a relationship without spending time with someone, we are entirely of a foolish mindset. Because if we want to get intimate with someone, if we want to have a deep relationship with someone, that takes dedicated time, not merely time just doing and, and having fun, but also time alone with each other to be able to hear and, and to dive deeper into what truly matters. And that is where God's voice most distinctively speaks the, from the experiential standpoint. We can know his word, we can hear his voice in the word, but if we want to experience God and know him in a more deeper, intimate way, we must practice the ability to get away and to get alone with God.